my hope is for all of you that you're going to walk away from this symposium feeling a lot more confident and a lot more capable to teach physical exam skills. We hope that we have something to teach you here, but we also know that there are many of you who've been at this for a long time as well. We know that we need to make those connections and we really want to learn from each other. It reminds me as to the reason why I came into medicine, which is to be able to make that difference for the patient. And the bedside experience really just heightens that experience and makes the most of the relationship that you build. And it's something we cannot do without. Patients are asking for more bedside attention and better examinations. Doctors would like to get back to it. Uh, so I think that's why it's important uh, to have a conference like this. I see the next couple of days as really helping all of us think about that intersection of science, technology, and humanism, which is really what makes medicine what it is as opposed to pure science what it is. One common problem I see that the students make all the time is you'll have one person who's like four, point, uh, four and a half feet tall and someone who's like six feet tall, and they're looking like this or the opposite, they're looking like that. You want to always make sure you're the same height. One of the best things that I've figured out from being at this conference is how to apply evidence-based medicine techniques to the teaching of bedside medicine. One of the lectures that we had talked about how clinical diagnosis skills are even better than ordering an MRI for detection of certain clinical problems. I think that when my students hear that, they're going to say, wow, what I do is really important. It's even better than a radiologic technique. I'm on the right path that what I've been doing before, I mean, it's given me more confidence that I'm not alone in terms of trying to emphasize physical diagnosis or teaching at the bedside, that this is a movement and I hope I continue to grow bigger. Did I pass? <laughs> wow. I'm hoping that this is the moment when we all come together, that we stay together, we stay connected uh, in this effort to take what we all believe are fundamental, important skills, important to the welfare of the patient, important to practice cost-effective medicine, important in choosing wisely, that we form a community uh, with solidarity around that theme. And the incredible thing is how much we learn from them. So this has been very much about people coming and demonstrating their pet skills. Uh, you know, when you do this for 30 years or 10 years or five years, you develop a certain expertise and you bring that. It's just been delightful but it's a good pedagogic tool. So Joyce is doing it very well, I must say. Do you see a diamond? Yes. Good, I expected you to. Okay, good. You can learn all you want out of a book, but being able to empathize and just know how to talk to somebody to alleviate their fears, and also some of the cases we have, the patient will act like they understand, they actually don't. Not only in Asia, but also in America, some young Western just skip the clinical skier and uh, they just go to the high technology. I teach medical students and residents, and I feel the exam is the most sacred sex part of the patient-physician encounter, and just the touching of the patient and kind of like looking at all of their findings is like an art that we have to try to teach in medical school because the rest of the stuff we can pick up in books and other things, but the art of medicine, I look at it as, as a physical exam. The real reason students need to master physical exam is because a large chunk of diagnosis, there is no diagnostic standard beyond your observations at the bedside. There's really important ways of making diagnoses uh, at the bedside by spending time with your patients and observing what's happening with them, performing certain high yield, low cost maneuvers. And I think it's something that we've gotten a little bit away from in the era of the electronic patient medical record and our ability to do very advanced but sometimes expensive diagnostic imaging tests. There are so many incredible people, not just here at Stanford, but from around the world who are facing the same challenges and opportunities that we are at Hopkins. And as we move forward, it's, it's very clear to me that there's a community of people across the world who are interested in re-emphasizing physical diagnosis and bedside encounters, and we have a great wealth of resources to now draw upon. The symposium is wonderful in open, opening up people's eyes to see how important this movement is and how many people are clearly interested in this and having to go forward and with the, in the era of all this electronics and me medical records, um, getting back to the basics of the patient and the physician and put your hands on them and examine them.
I'd like to think five, ten years down the line, people will look back and say, you know, this was the moment. Maybe they'll look back at this meeting and say, this was the genesis of a grassroots movement, bringing doctors back to the bedside, because that's where the patient is. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Please visit us at med.stanford.edu.